You're the nuclear scientist, I'm happy to say. I certainly am not. So how feasible is this that we could, within some reasonable period of time, actually be able to harness this fusion to power a lot of the United States? Well, I think, David, uh, first of all, and, and you had it right uh, in what you said, but uh, first of all, I think it's worth... Um, uh, for the uh, for the viewers uh, to understand that so fusion means you take very light uh, atomic nuclei like hydrogen nuclei forms of hydrogen and you literally fuse them together the problem is uh, atomic nuclei don't like to get close to each other because they have the same electrical charge so one way or another you got to provide a lot of energy a, a high temperature high density to get them to come together there are two methods. One way is you smash a small amount of fuel together. That's what happened uh, earlier this week uh, in, um, in California. Or you create a very hot, what's called plasma. You literally dissolve the atoms uh, and you confine it with magnets, uh, maybe with accelerators. To give you an idea of the scale, you have to reach temperatures of 100, 150 million degrees uh, as table stakes. Uh, and uh, that's about 10 times the temperature at the, at the beginning of the sun. That's why this has been a long quest. And what happened in California was the very first time that energy was supplied to this nuclear fuel, and it produced more energy by igniting itself, if you like. Uh, it was, it's been called a Kitty Hawk moment. Uh, Kitty Hawk showed that uh, people could fly. Uh, it was a long way to a Dreamliner, uh, and we still have a ways to go to make a commercial power plant, but the prize is incredible. Well, so talk the about that long way to go to get a commercial power plant. I know you're, I think, on the board of one company that is pursuing this. Uh, what sort of private participation is needed and is available to try to help expedite this? Right. There are several now companies uh, in few, using different technologies I'm on the board of something called TAE, uh, and uh, the, the idea is that these companies have attracted four to five billion dollars of private capital. So uh, they're all, and they're exploring different technologies. Uh, I believe that in this decade, we will demonstrate the science through multiple technologies that can accomplish fusion, and then the issue will be to engineer it so that you have a power plant providing electricity on the grid. The prize is that we would have an essentially limitless amount of carbon-free electricity uh, without any danger of long-lived nuclear waste as we have with today's nuclear power. So the prize is incredible. And obviously that amount of private capital means uh, somebody is betting on this happening. Uh, and I think we can demonstrate uh, and maybe initially deploy some uh, power plants on the grid uh, in the next decade. So in the case of fission, which is certainly very useful to try to get to zero emissions, even though, as you say, there are byproducts that are harmful, uh, there's been a lot of regulation that a lot of people think has really inhibited the development of fission. Are we going to have that same sort of regulatory hurdle, if not more so, when it comes to fusion? Uh, we should not. Uh, the, the regulatory uh, regime for nuclear fission is there for two reasons. Uh, three, actually three reasons, I would say. Uh, one is that uh, one must uh, certainly work at the highest standards uh, uh, in order to maintain a safe environment. Uh, we have seen in some accidents, uh, uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima, et cetera, that there clearly can be uh, public uh, risk. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the industry as a whole has got a fantastic record of, of, of safety, uh, but but you have to make sure you regulate it. Secondly, uh, the fission process creates uh, fragments, if you like, nuclear fragments that are highly radioactive and must be uh, stored, uh, which we have not done successfully in the United States, uh, underground for uh, literally millennia. Uh, third, uh, inherently the process could produce nuclear weapons material, and therefore, again, there's a different kind of regulation uh, needed there. None of those problems uh, uh, are there for fusion. So the regulatory regime, uh, clearly there are, there are worker safety issues, for example. There are short-lived uh, radiative 
issues in terms of uh, walls that have been irradiated, uh, but nothing like the major challenges uh, for waste management in the in the fission arena. So the regulation should itself be uh, much much. Uh, more uh, uh, re not relaxed, but uh, should not have the the high degrees of of of, of requirement that one sees in, in fission. Just briefly here at the end, Mr. Secretary, uh, given what you just said about the issues, it sounds like those might also make it feasible in success. The United States should really develop this. We might share it with other countries in a way that with fission we were very loath to do. Correct, because you d you do not have the proliferation risk uh, there. Uh, and again, you don't have the safety and the waste risks. So uh, I think, frankly, fu a fusion reactor on the grid would be a complete game changer. The other thing I should add, David, is because uh, in contrast to wind and solar, which will clearly be a big part mm. of the future electricity grid, yeah. but wind and solar are variable. Yeah. It depends on the weather. Uh, fusion does not. It's so-called dispatchable. Yeah. You can have the power when you want it, where you want it. And also, since you don't have uh, yeah. public safety issues uh, of any of any significant degree, yeah. you can also cite it much more easily.